filmings. Oh, our knees allowed to touch. A little bit, yeah. You can touch them. You can touch them, but don't rub. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the Unfinished Project. Now this is a new show on Bike World, which is exactly what it is. It's about sorting out that bike that's buried at the back of your garage, the one that you've been kind of snagging your trousers on for the last two years and convincing yourself you're going to get done. Well, we're about taking some of those bikes, dragging them out, and making them as awesome as they should be. Now, with me to help out on this first episode is Mr. Neil Hawker. Neil, where have you just come back from? I've just come back from Saudi Arabia, and I, I'm afraid it was an attempt at the Dakar. I crashed out on day Dakar five rally. and broke my top of my arm, shoulder, but we don't worry about that. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Neil's on light duties at the moment, I've asked him to come down, give me a hand. First thing about doing any project in a garage, it's way more fun if you've got your mates involved. Doesn't have to be involved in beer as well. That it helps can, sometimes. It, it, it can help. definitely help. You need to heal. No beer for you, my no. friend. What about pizza? <laughs> we can do pizza later. We'll definitely do pizza later. Now, the bike I've got today is kind of the reason Neil's here as well. Don't really like you that much, dude. Okay, thank you. I was wondering because we might have to stop here because look at the unfinished projects. I mean, just look at behind us in a few engines. <laughs> so Neil has decided that I need naming and shaming for the number of unfinished projects in my garage. So reluctantly, <laughs> Neil, what is your problem with my garage? This is not normal. This is not a normal garage. Now, when you, you come to Chris's um, sanctuary, um, <laughs> Asylum. Asylum. Every time I come here, there's a new thing, a new project. And now Unfinished Projects is a, is a very apt name because now just, just over here, we've, yeah, we said four engines. No, five, I'm six. six. I mean, <laughs> let's, just, Seven. let's just ignore that. Let's just ignore that. Well, that one, that one I'm doing. That, yeah, go on. That one isn't mine and I'm doing for someone else. And so you're not doing it's just here. It's just here. Uh, that one I'm doing. I'm doing that one. Mm. Uh, I'm in the middle of doing that one. I, I don't know what I'm doing with that. <laughs> that, just, that just lives there. <laughs> now, we've got to explain. Now, I, I don't want to blow smoke up Chris's... Um, pants. Pants. Chris is an unbelievably talented motorcyclist when it comes to tarmac dirt and it annoys the hell out of all of us you're being nice so I'm i sense nice. there's a butt <laughs> also he's a very he's a lover of cars now so unfinished project doesn't stop at motorcycles or houses or, what's that or, or bicycles, <laughs> or bicycles. <laughs> what, what please explain because this is actually very tidy last time i came here there was a a shell of a car in the middle. In the middle. But that, that I'm doing. That's that's like that's the Tuesday evening project. So every Tuesday evening, we fix stuff, and that is a 1960s Fiat 600 with a 2005 two-liter twin cam Renault in it. No, we haven't got time for this. Let's move it, on quickly. It's nearly done. Let's make a progress. <laughs> oh, explain. That's special. Explain. So. That's, that's a, it's gonna be a fossilized mini with the amount of stuff on top of it. I lived in that, that was my home. That was my home and I lived in it when I, I was 19. there's another story going on here, <laughs> people. There's another story that we're gonna to have to get back to. Now, come with me. Oh, come on, there's not that many. Don't open, don't open the door, Neil, don't open the door. <laughs> the door. <laughs> it's, it's locked, you can't get out. <laughs> it's the bolt at the top, dude. <laughs> He's fast, but he ain't smart. <laughs> Poorly but, wing. But, yeah, yeah. Is this normal? Okay, well, that... Let's close that the door do on this. Let's just <laughs> close the door on this. <laughs> They're nearly Let's, finished. They'll yes. be finished. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be finished one day. Okay, yeah. No, so, no, we're not even going in there. So I'm going to admit, I have a problem. Neil has now shamed me, but that's what we're here for. The unfinished project. <laughs> Can we do the KTM? Yeah, let's do the... You've announced it. I don't know what KTM. Okay, it's a KTM. Look! Look, it's a rally bike! This was the cheapest KTM 950 I could find on eBay. It has lived outside its whole life. <laughs> and you can see when you start looking closest. And it's one of those bikes that definitely, the old adage, 
the old adage, fit from afar but far from fit, is pretty much perfect. But, the start of our project. Neil, you need to see some of the highlights of this fine machine. Um, clutch lever, made out of a uh, two part epoxy putty metal. The mirrors are both, both smashed. Uh, the dash doesn't do anything. It does run. It <laughs> sort of runs anyway. Um, yeah, the whole bike is just pretty tired. Everything on it, every bolt you go to, every bit of painted metal is kind of rusty. I have cheated a little bit. I washed it when I picked it up because it was green. And I mean, green with mold where it's been living outside. So it has had a clean, but yeah, just generally it's tired. It's had a lot of a hard life. It's been abused or enjoyed, whichever way you want to look at it. And uh, I think it's time to yeah give it a spruce up, get it back to its former glory and maybe make it a bit faster. Here's a giant box full of tools I prepared earlier. <laughs> This is the most uh, prepared I've seen any project getting undertaken in this place. You've got tools! Yeah, good thing with motorbikes is don't need a ton of tools. You can just use pretty basic Allen keys, spanners, that sort of thing. There's not too many specialist tools needed to dismantle uh, until you start getting inside the engine. But for now, big pile of Allen keys, plastic box to lob all the bits in. Let's get stuck in! Evidence of a uh, of previous joy here, Neil. Look at that. Talking and everything. She's ready for rallying. That's a hell of a lunchbox. <laughs> How many bacon sandwiches can you fit in there? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you might be able to get more than you can get in the glove box of my van. This is my favourite feature of the KTM, I have to say, is the massive glove box. Look at all the things you can get in there. So much room for activities. Tape, got a bag, a teeny tiny mirror. That's not mine, that's not my makeup mirror, just by the way, that's... <laughs> I came with a bike. I'm saying nothing. Pillion pegs. Again, this is something that, depending on what the use of the bike is, you might or might not need. If you're planning just on going racing on it and doing some desert rallies, you're unlikely to need some pillion footrests, which is straight away two good things. One, it means if your boot gets knocked backwards, you don't get your heel stuck on the peg. And two, it's a little bit more weight saving. Look at the state of those. Every single bit of bolt we take off. In fairness to KTM, none of the bolts are seized, none of the bolts are stuck in, which is a good sign. But they are all rusty and grotty. One point one kilos is our weight saving. Wait a minute, can we add? So so far, what have we taken off? Let's take the. Where's the uh, key mechanism on the seat? Let's add that to the party. Don't lose him, are we? So we do. I mean, this is quite simple stuff so far. I mean. <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't weigh anything. Take <laughs> grab rails off. Which we don't need. No, it's not changing. Oh yeah. We went to 1.9. If we do that, it looks like we saved loads of weight. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> If you pull it too hard, <laughs> it'll come up and hit you in the face. But look at that though. Fuses. A smart new glove box. It's trick, isn't just it? Just like a running bike. So how much does this? Uh, how much does the each side take fuel-wise then? Well, it's 22 litre capacity in total. Yeah. Um, quick maths, quick maths, quick. Eleven-ish. <laughs> Eleven-ish litres in each side. You're not supposed to fill. I think it's the top one you're not supposed to fill for the brim, because then when you put it on its sides down, all the fuel pours out the lower tank. When I bought this bike, I did go online and look up 
KTM 950 Adventure known issues. And uh, <laughs> there's quite a few actually. It's definitely one of those bikes that owners tend to do their own work on. Like, there's a huge forum, loads of really good information out there on fault finding, spare parts, tuning. Yeah, we're definitely not treading new ground here. People have done a lot with these bikes over the years. And there's some good, there's some questionable info, but there's some really good info. Some really knowledgeable people. But it definitely does seem like they do go wrong from time to time. So I think we should have like a little checklist of how many of the known issues we can tick off. Like bo broken bike bingo. So one of the really nice things that I think about this 950, the more you work on it, the more it kind of feels like they've really thought about taking the bike apart and you know, getting fault finding and fixing things on it quickly. So the fuel tanks are two separate tanks and they're linked with some link pipes and there are three taps and the taps actually you can isolate either tank so if you blow a hole in one you can isolate it and still use the other tank and finally as well if you undo all the bolts it actually hangs on a pin on the top of the frame so you can then shift it around to get all the fuel pipes off unclip the fuel pipes and lift it off the pin it's a tiny tiny thing that doesn't matter day to day but it makes it really, really nice to work on in the shop. I wouldn't normally condone the turning of a tap with a pair of pliers, but in the case of this particular motorcycle, <laughs> the taps are pretty old and corroded. the pipe out and there barring a little bit of a fuel leak is my fuel tank hmm. do you remember when you did the jack car? I remember <laughs> last week or <laughs> two weeks ago yeah, when you did the jack car what did you have to do to your bike every night like what stuff was always like obviously tire change, was it a tire a day? Yeah, um, it, I mean, more for the sake of the mooses because we were doing such distances, the mooses get hot and start to disintegrate. Yeah. So, um, so for those who don't know, what's a moose? A moose is like a, a solid inner tube, so you, can, you don't get punctures. Um, it's the, like the equivalent of, let's say, 13 sort of PSI. So you change them every day? Yeah. Anything else? Obviously you check all the, you said earlier, nut and bolt checks. Nut and bolt checks. So air filter every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, oil every day, an oil, an oil filter every other day. But the guys from Motul were there and um, they'd do an, an oil analysis every day if you wanted it so you could basically go and get your oil tested which was a great little touch because they sponsored the class what and can um, they, tell by that? they can tell what's in the oil so I had a little bit of silica in there so I had a little bit of sand in there yeah. um, and that sometimes is caused just by you being clumsy when you're taking the oil sample because you're working in sand yeah. um, which they said could have been the case or um, or it's actually got into the engine somehow, which is always bad. Um, they can tell any metal parts, any um, yeah, how much the percentage of metal parts are in the oil, and um, obviously if there's a problem, if you're getting it tested every day and you see more and more metal parts each day, percentage-wise and stuff like that, and what metal they are, then you know you've got a, a problem, whether it be gearbox <laughs> or so anything using, like that. So they're using that to test the condition of the engine? Everything. Yeah, basically they're telling you, they, they can near enough tell you if there's going to be a problem, um, uh, it's, which is really good. That's pretty awesome really. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the oil, and it's obviously oil is the lifeblood of the engine, you need that, you need that um, perfect, so that's why we changed it every day. So, but the, the bike was doing around around sort of 500 to nearly a thousand K a day 
So um, yeah, you've got to keep on top of them things really. We're getting there with the old bodywork. It's uh, it's frightening just how dirty this bike is under the bodywork. Like bearing in mind, I gave it a pretty thorough clean before it came into the workshop. As soon as you take those outer panels off, everything is plastered with mud and grot and yeah, it looks horrible again. We have to clean it again, Neil. More nerdery now. Another really nice touch. The headlight. Once you take the side panels off, the headlight's just sat on top of those little lugs. You pop the lugs off, and the whole lot with the screen comes off. It's on its own plug. Nice little separate loop. Super easy to get off. I can see under here. Some of this stuff is standard, some of this stuff is definitely not. Um, we've got that little sub loom there, I'm not sure what that one is. That's a bodged indicator connection. It's got a set of heated grips fit to this bike. Um, the corroded fasteners are not great, they're pretty grotty. Um, but yeah, that's what all that wire in there is about. But generally it's pretty tidy, there's not too much junk under here. Again, a few of these things we can tape off and tidy up and, and do away with but all in all not the worst thing I've seen. He's a good boy tidying up his tools. Does that drawer not give you immense amounts of pleasure? Or is it just me? <laughs> the grotty and muddy. But more stuff off. We've got the, the heart of the bike, the airbox, the bit that makes it breathe. Pretty clean in there. Not too heavy. Got these nice little bell mouths that pop off. Try and keep all that stuff as clean as possible. And what state is the air fill in? Not as disgusting as you might fear. I have definitely seen worse. So if you look there, the carburetors are actually inside the airbox. It's a pretty cool setup. And the air comes in past the carburetors, up through the filter and then into the bell mount. That's pretty mad. Vroom, vroom. What did you have to say? <laughs> I have to say, still nothing seized. Or snapped off which is pretty good on a bike that is of this vintage and has had this much abuse. I haven't snapped this yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut that out until I've... Uh, <laughs> until I've <laughs> no, this is good. This is entertaining. <laughs> so, um... Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> and you just give it a little wiggle with your hands and it should come straight up. <laughs> 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 and what about how do you get it out of the freighter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Exhaust! We need to get it all over the floor, <laughs> that's important. Oh, oh. Hey. <laughs> it's clean! It's got a good coolant in it. I'll tell you, I think this is probably a factory race bike in the previous life. It's gotta be. Definitely. <laughs> Probably done that car already. Yeah. <laughs> That's your job in the workshop. That's an apprentice job. That's an that apprentice one. Just job. Keep knocking the bucket closer. Put those two down there. So there we have it. We've stripped it. We're most of the way, most of the way pulled apart. Loads of stuff off. Loads of 
bits kind of cleaned and, and worked our way through and it wasn't too bad was it Neil? No not at all I mean how many bolts did we snap or thread or? One, one rounded bolt. One rounded one bolt. Rounded bolt. And, and then yeah on a bike where the fasteners are this rusty I call that a win. Ah, that's a success definitely. So next job is oil out the engine drop the motor out the frame and then we're ready to kind of get things off the powder coating yeah um, which is something that again takes a couple of weeks so send it off they'll sandblast it all back we'll get all the powder coating done are we going bright orange like a rally bike oh I don't know if we want to go bright orange I quite like blue I think we should go and get pizza that tin of cider we spoke about mm. and uh, we can argue the about the colour late do into that. the night right Neil which is your good arm <laughs> it's been a pleasure <laughs> and uh yeah, tune in next time for what it looks like when it goes to powder coating.